Hi everyone, today we're going to look at some Azure policy governance. How do we put controls and guardrails onto our environment and some of the best practices? And we're also going to look at um, what we'll do is firstly, um, I'll bring on my guest, which is uh, Connor from our um, engineering DevOps team. And then we'll talk a little bit about what we're going to show you today. So here's Connor. Nice to be here, Matesh. <laughs> nice to meet you too. And Happy New Year to everyone as well. Um, so yeah, Connor, what, what should we, um, how are we going to describe today's um, little little uh, demonstration? So what do you think we should show today? Uh, we'll take a look, take a little bit of a look at um, differences between policies and initiatives or policy sets, as they're sometimes called as well. Okay. Um, how we're, you know, going to assign those and what they look like and then how we can find them using a tool called uh, Easy Advertiser, um, which is a really nice website. I think anyone who's had any spent any sort of time looking at policies on Azure can attest that it's can be quite slow, quite difficult. The search functions aren't always great to find what you're looking for. In the um, portal. So this, in the portal, yes. Okay, right. So Easy Advertiser is going to help us um, search and just um, keep up to date on policies. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, that, that's what I thought. We'd create a video because when I first saw it and I saw you using it, I thought it's a really good tool to, you know, demonstrate and let other people see it as well. So it's, it's pretty cool. So um, with that, what I'll do is I'll switch over to my desktop just to show you kind of uh, we'll look at a policy initiative. Um, we'll create, um, say, a deny rule. Um, and then we'll show you that in effect. We'll put a custom error message on there. And then what we'll do is we'll flip over and take a look at this um, uh, tool that Connor's talking about. So just first we'll show you in, in, in effect and then how we can uh, work with this tool to, to do a, a lot more. So if I switch over here. Okay. So sorry, not that one. And see that okay yeah okay okay so here's the here's a portal so what we'll look we'll go into the azure policy you should see that there or you can search for it up here so if we're going to here if we look at definitions so we can see definitions um assignments as well so inside definitions we've got both policies and initiatives so if we look at sorry inside here policy type you can see custom or built-in ones as well and Inside here, you'll see initiatives or policies. So if we look, let's take a look at policies at the moment. And we'll see there's a whole load of policies. These are kind of governance controls. They're, they're kind of checks or audit checks in your environment. And we can see there's, there's tons of them. I think there's about 2,000. And then what we can do is we don't want to be assigning them all individually, but you might need to some, sometimes or create your own um, initiative. So if we take a look at an initiative in here, and we'll see these are collections of policies, so it's a lot easier to work with. So we can see in this one, for example, it's got 33 policies inside that one. And all the policies in there are to do with um, audit category, enable audit category group resource logging for supported resources. Right Here's one for VM scale sets, uh, monitoring agents. And what we'll do today, we'll take a look at the audit public network setting. So, we, we work with some high security environments and uh, at one financial institution that we're working with at the moment, they've got very um, you know, strict um, security requirements. And what they wanna do is make sure that nobody can build um, a resource that's got access via the public internet. So by default, a lot of the resources such as a database or a storage account where you may be storing critical information um, is open to the internet. So what can we do to either audit that or prevent that? We can take a look at Azure policy to do something with that. So if we look at this one, audit public network access. Now this is kind of just definitions and we won't go into the definitions in this section because it's, it's quite detailed. And we can see there's a lots of different types of resources here. Automation accounts, cache, compute disk, data factory, for example. And then what we can do is we can assign that initiative. Now we can assign that to a very high level as we did with the, the, the recent customer right at the top. So nobody in their whole environment can create anything that's got um, internet access um, enabled to that resource. So in our case, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna assign it to my subscription and, and to a resource group just for the, for the demo, but normally you'd assign it right at the top here. So what we'll do here is I'm going to click next 
and we'll ignore these ones. You can uh, limit the certain types of resources that will be uh, applied to as well. So in here, I'm just going to do this one just to select. So you've got different controls. So we would generally do this via code anyway. Um, and you can see we've got options of audit or deny this resource type, or we can just disable this policy and it will just ignore it. So uh, if for an example, let's take a look at storage accounts. Uh, I'm going to do a deny on that one. In reality, we just deny all of them. And let's do a next, create, we don't need managed service because it's just a deny policy. And we can have a non-compliance message as well. So we could say uh, public access to PaaS resources is not allowed for Contoso. Let's say this is our organization name, if I can type. Yeah, and these kind of messages are really important as well as when you try and deploy a lot of these resources, you'll typically see a failure in the deployment a lot of the times. So making sure that you have a message there so users understand why it failed, and then they can go and yeah. seek out and say, oh, I left public access on, that needs to be disabled. Exactly. So yeah. it's really important, because otherwise it can be quite confusing to see why a uh, resource has been disallowed or you know what's causing um, something to not be deployed. So having these messages in place when you're preventing something via policy is really important. That's, that is a very, very good point as well, actually. So I, I think on, on that note, what we should do is, yeah, so we can see now the user's going to message, oh, it's from my organization. It's just, just a standard out of the box message. That doesn't mean anything. So we can even put, go further in this case, ensure uh, you block internet access for this resource type and redeploy so here's some instructions okay when it say um, the users or developers are deploying that via code they would need to make sure the option to enable internet access is switched off and then they'll be yeah. fine and you could also even include other instructions in there you know if you were for example wanting to direct someone to a, a team you know within your company that would make a change perhaps you're trying to deploy something that, that is a exception to the rule and you're getting right. this, you could then have a instruction that says, hey, go and speak to your, you know, this team, your operations team, and they can put an exclusion in place to allow you to deploy this resource. So um, yes. it can be really useful for that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Thank you for that. I, I think it's worth uh, just showing an exclusion as well, actually, isn't it? So that's a good point. So let's 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 assign that um, policy definition or policy set you said Connor so it's a policy set or a policy initiative and what we've done is just assigned it to my resource group so we can see now if we go into assignments we should see it here if I did it correctly yeah I can see that it's assigned to my um, subscription there assignment not found it might be because we oh so it's that might be an old one yeah. It might still be. Uh, take sometimes takes time, doesn't it? Okay, we'll yeah. come back to that in a minute. So what we'll do is let's go to that resource group and try and create something with an internet endpoint, which is the default for for many of the resource types in in, in the platform. So if we do storage account create. Let's just give it a random name. Hopefully nobody else is using it. Let's just use the local. I'm just going to, so this is kind of preventing people from just going next, 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 finish. And you can see the default is enable access from the internet or all networks is the same thing. Review that. And then if I try and create it, I'll get a failure message here. So because of that policy, it's unable to create it. And if I click on the error message, I'll be able to see down here. Public access to PaaS resources not allowed for Contoso. Ensure you block internet access for this resource type and redeploy. So that tells the user, oh, hang on a minute, I should have um, unticked that box to allow internet access. So now we know anywhere in our whole environment, or at least in this case, that resource group, we, we will not be able to go and deploy a public um, storage account, um, sorry, a storage account with public access. Now what happens, as Connor says, if you want to exclude something so i don't think it's showing up here properly uh, yeah it's showing there yeah, this one, isn't it? yeah so on here we can look at we can edit that assignment here as well it's yeah. an uh a create exception oh you have to uh, create an last, exception yeah, oh, okay yeah, yeah. so i can create an exception 
and then the exception scope. So if I, if I would generally do that a lot higher up in the management group, and I could create a, a, an exception for a resource or a resource group here as well. So we could do it that way. So there's an exception. There's also an exclusion as well, which is what I was trying to show you. And it goes, if I go to edit assignment, let's say if this was further up, I could create an exclusion for a resource group. So I could then click on this. If we were higher up, I'd be able to see resource groups. I'd see other resource groups. I'd see mine. I could exclude it there. So it would just want to uh, apply that uh, policy to that resource group. Okay. So we can see kind of that's how they work. We, we saw the error message and, and we see we can see how powerful those kind of things are. And then we can see exceptions here as well. Um, so to look at the definitions. So if I want to find something in here. You know, we've got the built-in ones, we've got custom ones as well. So I could do a search, search through here. I've got a, a, some filters and stuff here. But if I want to take that to the next level, kind of that's where this um, AZ advertiser comes in. So if we could flip to that now, and we can see AZ advertiser here. So it's azadvertiser.net. And we can see, I can write on the home page. we can see like um, summary of changes. So we can see, you know, some policies here. So there's been a new policy that's been put into the platform um, on the 19th of December there. Three deployed on the 14th. We can see an, a two new initiatives have been uh, added to the platform here as well. So we can, if we click on them, we'll be able to drill in and take a look. So Connor, what if we want to see, what if we want to look for something specific, let's say our storage account thing that we just look for, where, where should we go and look for that or anything else? Yeah, so um, obviously we've got the two tabs at the top. We've got policy and initiative. Yeah. Um, so in this case, it does kind of split those up if you're searching for them. So make sure you're on the right tab there. Um, so yeah, let's look for our policy. Um, so you've got a number of things you can filter by here. You can filter yeah. by version and sort by all sorts. Um, uh, this is really going to help you narrow down on what you're looking for. Um, yeah. So yeah, why don't we uh, look for our one? Um, so okay. it was... Uh, Denied public access, was it, uh, for social uh, accounts? Yeah, something like that. So do um, we need to do any of these filters up here? Um, we can. Um, however, like for the moment, let's just uh, okay. use display name. Um, display name, yeah. Believe, so, uh, so denied public or public should find let's it. Let's just yeah. take a look at that specifically, actually. So storage account, what was it called? Storage account should disable public. Ah, there you go. So, so yeah, it has got the word public in it. Yeah, okay. And then we can even use a description as well to narrow so, it down. If, for example, let's say storage, shall we? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there's, we can see a few policies in here. That that um, kind of setting is, is 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 enabled for. Okay. And now we've we so we've got all the built-in. We've got community and stuff as well. So we might want to filter those as well. So so where would we go to filter the built-in? Uh, if we want to filter that um, up the top at type, um, we can then filter there. Uh, so if you click on that, uh, yeah, yep. you can so then select built -in. built in policies. So that will, how many of that given us? Uh, just seven now. So it's going to be kind of one of these, right? So it's probably storage accounts should disable public network access. That's probably that one. Storage accounts should disable public network access. It looks like that one, yeah. And we yep. can see the policy so, ID here as well. So when we're doing that in code, we can take the policy ID and add that to our code. Yeah. And something really nice on this screen as well, um, mm -hmm. and this goes for all of the policies, what you're searching for here, um, is it also shows what policy sets they're used in. Um, so yep. you can find, for example, there might be the case that you've wanted to say disable um, public access on, on storage accounts mm. and come across this audit one, uh, the audit initiative we found that includes many other resources and decide, well, that seems important to me to actually disable public access across many more resources rather than just the storage account. So I think it's a nice way to sometimes, if you're just looking for a single um, okay. policy, to then find sets of them or, or things that do go together. There's a lot yeah. of good um, policy sets around virtual machines and um, you know managed identities and, and uh, guest extensions on there that kind of all work as one. So it's sometimes nice and sometimes a nice way to search for for um, initiatives and policy sets that are yeah. like that. So we should see that initiative then in here as well, and the one that we actually used, which was um, this one, audit public network access, which includes that plus many others, as you said. 
So if we look down here, so we should be able to see, uh, it's here as well, yeah, it's already there. Audit public network access, you can see 5C08. Can we see the ID of that? Might be asking too much now. Yeah, yeah here we go, 5C08. So is that is that specific policy initiative? And then, you know, we can go into that one and then see actually all the policies, just like we can in the portal, but it's just a, a nice way of searching for it, categorizing it. And I, I think this, this is really good for documentation as well. So when you say, you know, what, what policies are we going to apply in this environment? We can let's expand that a bit so we can see all of them. And then you get the full list, you get all the IDs, the categories, you know, the effects that are available um, and, and some of the other stuff as well. GA is, a, is another good thing. So make sure they're generally available as well. And also another good thing here about the um, history as well. So this will be the history of that policy set. Um, so we can see it's like, yeah. So then we can see the different uh, policies that have been added. So you can say, look, two policies here were added on the 18th to this policy set. So yeah, that's really good. And you can see the code in here as well, what's been updated here. So you can see the code versions changing, et cetera, et cetera. You can even see the actual code of the policies themselves. So cool. So that was um, a quick rundown of um, this AZ Policy Advisor. So back here. So yeah, thanks very much. So hopefully um, that was useful. You can see kind of the power that was just kind of scratching the surface a little bit, and we've not really gone into, you know, all the other stuff that policies can be used for, and you know, the general scope of them. We're using the management groups. Uh, we, we could potentially talk a bit more about management groups another time. We've done a video recently on it. Um, but we'll do another one on, on, on the Canary model as well. So there's another model that we've been using for, for the same customer, actually, um, on, you know, that management group structure. Um, anything else, Connor, that we should mention now? Um, I don't think so. I think we've covered it um, fairly well. Um, just to say, you know, definitely recommend using that website. Um, I think anyone, again, like I say, who has used the Azure portal to look through policies and just to see what's there knows how difficult that can be to use. And, you know, opening multiple tabs in Azure and it sending you back to the home page. So then you have to, you know, you know, uh, dive back into where you were again. Whereas here, you know, it's much easier just to be able to navigate between policies and look at different policies and sets yeah. um, is, is a really big bonus, you know. Yeah, I, I like the history as well. You can see, you know, where they've added new policies and stuff. So that's really useful. I think the other thing to mention is the Azure Governance Visualizer. So that's another tool that helps with policy governance. You know, you can look at your environment. So we'll do another separate um, video on that one just to show how that works and what, what you can see in that really really useful stuff so yeah thank thanks kind of for taking us through that and yeah hopefully you found that useful and yeah let us know any questions give us a shout thank you very much thank you